True Crime with Shane, where truth meets speculation, investigating crime from the past and the present. If you love true crime the way that I love true crime, then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe as well as that notification button. That way you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. Thanks in advance, guys. Now let's get to some true crime. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to do a quick little update as far as the Idaho 4 case is concerned. We're talking about the case where four university students lost their lives on November the 13th in the wee hours of the morning. Maddie Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Cornoto. Now there's some information out there, but there's not a lot of new information out there. So what I did was I went he went ahead and I kind of went back and backtracked and looked over some of the old footage, the old pictures, the old interviews and things like that. And I did find a few things that was very telling and that was very interesting. One of which was when the chief of police, James Fry, along with Captain Lanier, spoke. This was in the early stages, and you guys, I am a firm believer that in the early stages of things, you usually get the raw truth, or at least some of the raw truth. Now, what I took from these pressers, and there are two separate pressers, but in these pressers, and they were one of the first or second pressers that came out, they are stating and confirming the exact same fact. And that speaks volume, in my opinion. And speaking of my opinion, I think they are right on the ball. Or I think that they were right on the ball when they spewed that information. Not only did they say that, but Kaylee Gonzalez's father said that on multiple occasions. He stated that he believed that it was targeted. He did state that he felt his daughter, Kaylee, was targeted. We don't know that at this point, and I myself am leaning a little bit more towards Maddie Mogan, but again, we don't know because there's so much information out there. Okay, Why would they say that this was a targeted incident? They had to have some information, and I do believe that it is a part of that redacted information. As a matter of fact, I'm almost sure that it's a part of that redacted information because a latent shoe print does, it, does not tell me that this was a targeted attack. Dylan Martinson's statements, that doesn't lead me to believe that this was a targeted incident. So... What leads me to believe that this was a targeted attack was what you both said early on during the early parts of the investigation. That's right. So we're not doing that. We're going to roll with what you said in the beginning because I do believe that that was the raw truth. I believe they had already spoke with people at the Mad Greek. They had already um, had some digital forensics and stuff like that. And that's just my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and take a listen to Chief Fry as he gives his opinion. And he clearly states that this is what they believe to be a targeted attack. Place today on all the victims so we can continue to gather evidence and solve the crime. Investigators are working to follow up on all leads and to identify a person of interest. Based on details of the scene, we believe this was an isolated, targeted attack on our victims. Now, you guys heard that, right? Evidence located at the scene. What is the evidence located at the scene that makes you think that this is a targeted attack? Let's take a listen to Captain Lanier's explanation. He gets kind of snippy. Sir, why not tell the public who the target was? You've said that this was a targeted attack. Why not tell the public who was targeted? If it was multiple people, it would go a long ways to telling the public what you're looking for. 
and who you're looking for, the type of person you're looking for. Why not do that to alleviate some of the fears out there in the community? Well, first and foremost, we have the integrity of the investigation to preserve. And we feel like that information is integral to us and how we conduct our investigation. Releasing that to the public may or may not flood us with a lot of information that's not relevant or specific to what we're looking at. Don't you so, want more information from, from the public? We do want case? more information, but we don't want to, t to uh, we don't want to put our investigation in jeopardy by releasing what we have. There's always a balance between what you're willing to release versus what you're trying to gather. Uh, we told the public very clearly from the beginning that we're looking for a knife. Uh, we've told the public very clearly from the beginning that we believe it was a targeted attack. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you're going to have to trust us on that at this point because we're not going to release why we think that. Now you heard that loud and clear from the horse's mouth. Now let's address this latent shoe print. Now there were so many people in and out of that residence. We already know that there were multiple students in and out of the residence before law enforcement even got there. We need to know what size shoe did Hunter wear? What size shoe did Ethan wear? Because I surely believe that something happened in that kitchen. I don't know why but I just do. We do know that Brian Kohlberger had a big feet, <laughs> a big foot. <laughs> he wore a size 13. So was the Layton shoe print a size 13? Or was it a shoe print that belonged to someone else who had trampled through the crime scene? There was also first responders there. So guys, we just don't know. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to bring up which is going to be my last point for today in this video is actually I have two now that I think of it but one is going to be how do we know where Kaylee was actually located when the perpetrator allegedly Brian Kohlberger entered the upstairs portion of the house we don't know that she was actually asleep in that bed with Maddie. Now, we know that she was dead in or on that bed with Maddie. But we don't know if she interrupted something, if she heard something, which makes a lot of sense because Maddie had a tiny bed in her room. Um, not sure if it was a full or if it was a twin. I do know that some of the pictures floating around on the internet about her bedroom, people are showing her dorm room before she moved into the 1122 King Road residence. But we do know that that was one of the smaller rooms. Um, I just don't see why two grown women would be in the bed together um, when you're, you've brought your dog there and he's in your bedroom. Now, previously on one of my videos, I kind of thought, yeah, well, maybe that might make sense because there were some boxes shown in Kaylee Gonzalez's room through the patio window during this time but I'm inclined to believe that she may have been in her own room with her dog and heard something got up to come and take a look and she was snatched in on what was taking place there I don't think Maddie put up a big fight Maddie was toasted and we all know this we saw the grub uh, truck video the video before they even made it to the drug the grub truck <laughs> she was you know she was feeling good and um Kaylee was a little bit more um, sober, in my opinion, okay? Now, the last thing that I want to say is also Xana Cronodo and the DoorDash. There is a bag, as you can see here, sitting on the counter. There's also a Starbucks cup. Now, originally, I thought that that cup came from Jack in a Box as well, but it looks like it's a Starbucks cup. It also has lipstick on the straw and there is a little bit of whatever they were drinking, whomever was drinking it. But that same cup is sitting on the table. So my question is, at what point did this cup get on the table? Was this evidence? If so, why was it moved? 
it could go either way because we've seen pictures of the house. These are college students and <laughs> shoot, I mean, you eat and you leave stuff around and you get up and go and run off to class. That's just kind of how it goes. But I'm speaking in terms of this case. How do we even know that that Jack in a Box bag was the DoorDash that was delivered to Xana that night or that morning? We don't know that because from the looks of things, it looks like they leave their packaging and food and whatever, wherever, which is normal for college kids. So that's another thing that sticks out in my head. We don't really know where the DoorDash door order came from. We don't even know if that's it in the kitchen at all. So that is my point. I have one last point to make, and that is I do think that Ethan and Zana was collateral damage. I do believe that something happened in that kitchen and something happened in that living room towards that hallway because there were pictures around where you did see the crime scene investigators in that living room focused on a specific area that was right near that good vibe sign. Now don't get it twisted because there are two good vibe signs in that house. There's one in Kaylee's room and there's one downstairs by their little makeshift bar. And that is the one that I am speaking of, the one in the living room. I do believe that something happened near that area you guys let's keep the conversation going of course you know i'm trying to grow this channel so subscribe hit that like button put this video in algorithm and make sure that others see this thank you guys for rocking with me today until next time